Today I'm doing a breakdown of the dandy archetype from Robert Greene's book, The Art of Seduction. Let's get it. Yeah. I'm inspired. Yeah. I'm inspired. Yeah. Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumit Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today we're breaking down the dandy archetype from the book, The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, okay? Now, just brief background. First of all, thank you to the person who reminded me to continue with this video series, Sam. Thank you, I appreciate that. If you like it, hey, I'm doing this for all you guys. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here to help. If you need any support in terms of archetypes, let me know and then we can dive deeper personally into what is your archetype and how to find out, you know? So that would be the next step. These are obviously my opinions and perspectives with Robert Greene's actual facts that he's put down. And so if you have opinions about it, you can go make your own video about it or, you know, you can ask me questions about why I came to those certain conclusions. OK, moving forward, the dandy archetype. OK, the dandy archetype is very interesting to me because as a flow state coach, I know that flow state is transitional. And I see the dandy almost like a rebellious transition from one state to another. It's absolute simplicity. So when you see characters like Lord Byron or Baudelaire, that like these are the characters we think of when we think of dandy. But we also think of this kind of androgyny, right? And I'm not saying that, you know, to really focus in on gender norms or any of this kind of stuff. However, if you just look at the dress sense that you as a man, okay, you as a man have this sense of I'm attracted to a woman. Gender orientation is straight in that sense, right? And you as a woman have this idea, okay, I really like a man. However, at the same time, there is this inherent narcissism in ourselves that makes us see this kind of dandyish archetype is somewhat attractive. And Robert Greene seems to believe this is our inherent narcissism. We like people who look like us. And so people who are subverting the norm or going into this counterculture kind of dress sense and attitude, they're going to be looked at, okay? The, the dandy is very flamboyant, whimsical, very stylish, very fashionable. They make statements with their clothing. They have statement pieces, right? From these, those old school artists who would have like a lobster with a leash on and stuff like this. You know, it, it goes to that level. What I've noticed in those who embody this archetype very well is they're a little bit retro, right? It's slightly anti-modern because they have this kind of old school quality about them. I think that's also something that hints at this nostalgia that we crave. When we see a dandy, we see someone who embodies freedom. They're not attached to very specific archetype. They are a little bit in their own world. Before I even break this down, I just want to mention one of my favorite animes of all time, Space Dandy. If you want to learn more about the dandy archetype, definitely watch Space Dandy, 100%. Now, I don't want you to start peacocking and overdoing this because the dandy style is very subtle. It's stylish, but it's subtle. They're just tiny little touches that mark their disdain for conventional. Robert Greene says that you gotta make yourself an object of fascination as a dandy. Dandies live for pleasure, not for work. They're there to enjoy the luxuries of life. You want to take aesthetic into everything that you do. It's almost like making your life into a performance art piece. Because it's so alluring and in this kind of fluidity of character, you understand that they also have this level of mental transvestitism. What does Robert Greene mean by that? It's the ability to enter the spirit of the opposite sex and understand them. I'm mesmerizing this mirror quality in this other person where they're seeing little elements of their gender in you. It's disarming them. It's leaving them open to the man making some kind of a bold masculine move because their defenses are down in a sense, okay? So this is kind of that understanding of this archetype it's sort of like that understanding of like oh no you know he would never date me he's gay right is he i mean he's kind of handsome but 
it's like that sense of that mystery where you can't really capture the essence of that person. So you start creating your own narrative. It's the thing, right? We are meaning making machines. So we will create our own narrative in our own minds about this particular archetype. I got fascinated by this whole idea of guy liner and how sometimes when I would wear that, I would notice the attention that I got from females. It was a very interesting understanding and really, you know, it really depends on the type of archetype that you wish to attract, right? And hey, I gotta note that not every girl is gonna be attracted to this archetype, but you are gonna draw in a very specific type of woman who's very interested in that, you know? Perhaps she likes you wearing earrings or a nose piercing as a guy, or even, you know, certain types of jewelry and necklaces or painting your nails black and things like this. The symbol of the dandy is the orchid, a tropical flower, rare, right? Its odor is sweet and decadent, it applies to both genders. It's this highly delicate, highly cultivated, tropical flower of evil. In society, roles are very obvious, right? This person is a teacher, this person is a lawyer. When we don't know what someone's role is, that's when we sort of start to get more intrigued as we're like, but what does he do? If you can combine your male-female energy together, that would be the ideal way to play the dandy, straight up. Like I can simplify it towards that, okay? So you would play around with different kinds of clothing. Uh, if you're a woman, perhaps even, you know, if you're the male dandy version, so if you are the woman uh, attracting the male, maybe you can go for, like, you know, sometimes you'll go for more of a tomboyish look, right? So the little sweaters and things like this. But you don't want to do it to overdo it, right? That's the that's the thing. A lot of people think it's overdoing it. Robert Greene says to combine the subtle with the outrageous, both masculine and feminine. I thought it was quite interesting how he brought up Freud and how he states that we're all kind of bisexual in a sense. I'm more on Team Jung in a sense. However, it's an interesting idea, right? It's a very interesting idea. We've got to understand as people what it means that we have this repression inside of us, right? There's this guy, he's sensitive, maybe he's uh, sophisticated, he's maybe very metrosexual, right? He's, he's very, uh, takes care of himself, all this kind of stuff. But then there's also a hint of this kind of male cruelty, not, not so much as a cruelty, like I'm there to harm, but this sense of, uh, this slight edge of just like making a bold move or being slightly more flirtatious in a sense. So. You see characters like maybe, um, I think Lenny Kravitz is a good example, actually, of a dandy. And also Jared Leto, Matt Bomer, maybe even Pharrell or like Jaden Smith, Harry Styles. I've seen them like wear lots of like female jewelry and like female clothing at times too. Um, that's becoming slightly popular nowadays, right? It's very strange that the whole andro androgynous look is slowly subverting into culture and make it's becoming more mainstream in a sense so uh, that's not the point of the dandy like the dandy is rare it's, he's a rare breed he's a rare flower so it is an interesting archetype to play you want to have this refinement quality right this quality of refinement and this quality of almost like i said that mental transvestitism so it's like you understand psychologically like a, a female's mind like you speak that language in a sense. It's not like a male style of communication that it's like, you know, let me fix this. No, I'm a listener, I'm intuitive, I'm able to hold space. It's like, it's like that. You want to really cultivate certain senses of your archetype. If you are a dandy, you play it very well. You'll understand how to play it, right? You'll either wear like one of those little dangly earrings or, you know, you play around with jewelry. You allow yourself to have these little statement pieces and really get yourself more refined in terms of that character. Over time, I think it's a very, very powerful way to, you know, again, be very comfortable and confident with how you portray yourself comfortable with your own sexuality obviously because a man needs to do that if he is a dandy totally being committed to the role of this flamboyant outrageous but subtle character i hope you enjoyed this today if you have any questions shoot me a message may the flow be with you and stay legendary let's get it today upward spiral gang hit that subscribe button